Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here at the Farnborough International Air Show, about 30 miles southwest of London, one of the world's most important air shows with leaders from governments, military, industry, and aircraft from all around the world on this, the centenary year of the Royal Air Force, the world's first independent air force. Our coverage here is sponsored by Farnborough International and Leonardo DRS. And we're over here on the uh, Esterline uh, stand to talk to the president of Esterline Mason, David Tessier, uh, who... Um, uh, works for a company with uh, decades-long heritage in making uh, military control systems. David, thanks very much for the time. Thanks very much, Vago. So you guys have been in the controls business for uh, 70, almost 80 years, in the late 40s when you guys got started. Uh, and talk to us about the Mighty Hawk system and the Inside Hawk. Uh, one is line of sight, the other one is uh, over the horizon. But you're bringing something that's very, very intuitive, ruggedized, that can actually have applications across the board. Talk to us about a little bit of the heritage you're bringing to answering the problem, but also what are the specific capabilities you, you guys are bringing to market with these two systems. Thank you, Vago. About our heritage, it's, uh, as you said, almost 80 years of human-machine interface providing primary flight controls to primary commercial aircrafts as well as rotary wing, uh, and we're actually the leader in rotary wing uh, control grips for the North American market. Um, leveraging that human machine interface into a new product, which is really to answer our customers and the new markets that is UAV uh, and the growing market that are ground vehicle. And what the goal of this controller is, is to provide ruggedized way to keep our warfighters out of harm's way. And so if you think about uh, the new drones or UAVs that are uh, being used in the Navy today to, uh, to, 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 to fight uh, for our country, uh, um, this controller is going to allow our soldiers to stay out of harm's way by using a remote control, um, PlayStation type ruggedized controller with a screen to be able to see what that UAV uh, is seeing and make decision and take care of the mission without uh, being in harm's way. So it's about really situational awareness by protecting our troops out there. Um, with applications, uh, as I said, with UAVs, but also in rotary wings or in all kinds of adjacent markets that we're trying to explore today. Uh, including commercial, right? Because there are commercial applications you can use the systems you're, you're for as well. Very correct. Um, commercial applications, even adjacent, industrial, we're looking at it, at it as well. Think about a crane that are mechanically act, you know, actuated or controlled today. Could be uh, uh, act, uh, really controlled using using our new product. Instead of that big bulky, uh, big yellow box with uh, you know red, green buttons on it, this is a, a little bit more intuitive to use. That's exactly right. So we have two uh, product families within the Hawk. Uh, we have uh, Inside Hawk for uh, line of sight applications where the user actually sees what he's controlling. Uh, and we have the Mighty Hawk, which includes a five inch HD screen, which is sunlight readable, uh, uh, incorporated a lot of the features that our customers have been asking for, uh, for applications that you do not have line of sight, uh, for increased situational awareness. And uh, we're very excited to put this product to the market. Uh, we're expecting a worldwide release at the end of this calendar year, uh, and we think we can take over the world and uh, you know, increase protection for uh, our troops out there. I want you to picture that uh, you're a warfighter for the U.S. government, and you're in the desert somewhere in the Middle East, and you have uh, a, a, a bomb on the side of the road, which is the uh, little uh, picture on top right of your screen, um, which, by the way, I can control uh, using this joystick here on the right, and I can zoom in as well. So I've got my, uh, my, my soldier here that's uh, trying to disarm that bomb, and I'm keeping an eye on him while checking for uh, the area around him. So let's just say I've identified that there's three helicopters coming our way. I have already uh, targeted them. I can select which one I want to auto-engage on. And uh, if I'm uh, using a, a 50 cal on top of my uh, uh, remote vehicle, I just eliminated one of the helicopters. Uh, I can now automatically select the next helicopter, engage, which will auto-center my weapon, and uh, very easily, from a remote and safe location, take care of the threat. Um, I can also, with the other joystick, obviously, control this manually and continue to continually increase my situa situational awareness uh, to make sure that my soldier uh, still disarming the bomb uh, is in uh, operating in a safe condition. Uh, we can customize anything on this screen. Uh, to give you a couple of examples, we can um, have each individual feed um, show up on the screen. We can also have them fast side by side. During this, you can still control each of them individually. Uh, and again, we can put anything on the screen that uh, our users might be interested in. Uh, it comes with a menu, it can, we can put any kind of language, again, it can, any kind of symbology on this screen uh, is up to our user. Similarly, in terms of the controls, we can customize the top plate in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we've, as I mentioned earlier, uh, designed this in a very modular way, which allows us, again, to customize 
um, and get the product to market uh, in less than six months. You guys also, uh, you know, you mentioned when you're talking about OEMs, you've uh, been working uh, for both Boeing and Airbus in terms of uh, fl uh, flight control systems and uh, and the like. Um, you know, sometimes it's said that you know, hey, why don't we just buy a Nintendo control unit and send it out there to do that? I think that they're they're you know that that is an attractive idea, but there are also some challenges. What 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 else are you guys bringing to the market? You know that you know what is it you can do that that they, for example, wouldn't be able to do? The number one the number one technology and draw to our product is really the ruggedized aspect. Uh, this product has been tested to hi the highest aerospace standards um, in terms of vibration shock and all the environmental requirements that our typical customers ask for. Uh, so ruggedized is our number one feature. As well as we've listened to our customers with our first generation Hawk product, this is our second generation, and this new generation incorporates all the new APIs in terms of being able to uh, use the screen in a very flexible manner. Uh, you can display anything that you want on the screen, picture in picture, side by side feeds, menus in any language you want, any symbology that you want to incorporate, very flexible interface. Uh, as well as how to uh, all of the connecting uh, connections to the to the controller, incorporates we can incorporate USB connections, uh, CAN bus, uh, RS standards. Uh, we really can do it all. Uh, and uh, again, listening to our customers and really incorporating these features to make the use and application uh, as flexible and easy for our customers as possible. So talk to us about some of the first generation customers you guys had and who uh, is, is likely to be announced and when in terms of who the launch customer is going to be for the new line. Um, in terms of our new customers, I'm going to keep this uh, confidential until we release at the end of the calendar year. However, our first generation Hawk um, was heavily used by the US uh, government. Um, I can't provide more information about the detail application, uh, but it's uh, our primary uh, primary customer for the first generation. Um, when uh, you're looking at this kind of connectivity, right, increasingly we're getting wireless communications. I know that there are some challenges that are associated with it. How long do you think before there will be reliable wireless links between a system like this and a primary system? Because at the end of the day, you do have a cord that is a limiting challenge. As somebody who just got ear pods, a uh, very big difference from always having had a headset uh, on, on my head. Um, you know, but then again, you also look at a lot of interference issues that you wouldn't have otherwise had that you find out in very surprising ways. Yep. Crap, my headset now doesn't, doesn't work. I'm not busting on Apple, I'm just making an observation. <laughs> you know, security uh, is our number one challenge for Wi-Fi in the types of application that we're looking at. Uh, interference and security uh, are two big challenges. We're looking into that. Uh, this particular generation Hawk is scalable to a Wi-Fi solution. So we've incorporated in a modular approach in our design, um, uh, we've got design blocks really making up this new product, which allows us, by the way, to reduce lead time and cost, uh, another uh, key uh, that our customers were asking for. Um, but Wi-Fi will happen, you know, to answer your question about timing, uh, it might be our third generation Hawk, but I would see that within a decade, we will have wireless capabilities for this product. Um, and let's talk about uh, both the addressable size of the market and what differentiates you from everybody else who's out there. What's the size of the market ballpark? And Ultra has very, very similar systems to this. A number of other players in the market have it. What is it that gives you guys an advantage from your standpoint? You know, as you're making your case, what's the case you make over the other guy's product? You know, in terms of the size of the market, it's something we're still working on. Um, it, it's interesting because we, we understand it quite well when it talks about ground vehicle and defense, but there's so many adjacent uh, capabilities for this product that we're still exploring what that, that market looks like. Um, in terms of what differentiates us, uh, as I said, there is no other ruggedized controller that is certified um, in use today by, uh, as I mentioned, the U.S. government uh, that can compete with these products. Uh, we incorporate, uh, as I said, the flexibility. Uh, we can get a custom Hawk to market within six months. We've done this uh, in our uh, first generation and we're improving upon the, those uh, you know, time to market uh, uh, cycles. And, um, and again, the features, uh, the detailed features of the product is really what differentiates us on top of the ruggedized aspect of it. Well, David, uh, oh, and uh, production numbers. So roughly, how many a year do you think your lines are going to be running at once you start to get a little bit of a cycle on it? Just to give people a sense for what the bread box size, or maybe even you can talk about sort of market expectations. You know, will you be making 10,000 a year, 500 a year, 5 million a year? What, what do you think the market size is roughly? To give you a range today, our goal is to get into the, the thousands. Um, you know, one Oshkosh vehicle that hits the, uh, the, 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 uh, the army today uh, is in the tens of thousands of vehicles. And, and this, these are the types of uh, volumes that we're looking at. And uh, but rough unit price and life expectancy, because even as rugged as you can make it, this is the business end of getting beaten up something all the time. 
give us life expectancy and roughly ballpark unit cost that you're shooting at because you want to make it more attractive to anybody to be acquiring this and which will be particularly important on the commercial market. We believe that in terms of life expectancy, the controller will beat any uh, reliability product that you will control. Uh, so we really don't expect any maintenance or any types of, uh, of life issue for the, for the product. In terms Which is a problem for you. <laughs> yeah, it is a, pro it's a problem, but it, it's what our customers are asking for. Right. We're, we're listening and we're answering our customers' demands. Um, in terms of the pricing, it's going to be a few thousands. Uh, right now, the current controllers you can find out there that, again, have much less features, much less scalable capabilities, uh, go for roughly $10,000. We're going to be uh, less than half of that. Um, and let me ask one, uh, you know, trade uh, uh, trade question. Um, you know, we're in a time of a transatlantic trade war. Um, you know, do you expect any challenges either one way or or another? Uh, you know, we have a buy American, uh, America first. Uh, that's that's out there. The Europeans are coming up and saying, well, you know, if you're going to be America first, we're going to be Europe first. Let's get our systems together. Do you think that you'll fare well despite some of these uh, trade uh, trade tensions? I'm going to answer your question in, in two ways. In terms of the trade aspect, uh, we've designed this product to be such um, scalable and flexible in the supply chain that we have very little impact from any kind of trade wars. Uh, the other um, way I'm going to answer your question is in terms of trade compliance. Um, this first generation Hawk had been developed for U.S. military application, U.S. defense, made, which made it an ITAR controlled product, very difficult to ex export. Again, listening to our customers in uh, the rest of the world, we actually have made the new generation Hawk ER99, making a dual use product, which means we can ship it to any country in the world without any restrictions from the U.S. government. Again, a big ask from our customers. So overall, no, no concerns relative to your question. David Tessier, president of Westerline Mason. Thanks very much, David. Thank really appreciate much. it. Best of luck on the new product. It's very, very cool. And if I could uh, figure out some way to incorporate it into what we do, I'd probably consider it just because it's so cool. Thank Thanks you. very, very Thanks much. Thanks for your time. Thank you.